I have a gentleman here that's a very dear friend of mine, and uh, I know it has nothing to do with nuclear testing, but I'd like you to hear some of his stories um, about uh, being in the, in the Army at the age of 19. And um, uh, he was in the Army, and he spent some time training time in, in the States, and maybe some of that was in England. I don't want to take all of his story. And uh, he was uh, at Normandy Beach, June uh, 6, 1944. Mr. Benzer, come on up. Yeah, my name is Gaetano Benzer. And yes, I was involved with Normandy. I know it's a long, long time ago. Uh, wow, 71 years ago now. Uh, this past June, it would be 71 years ago. <clears throat> I'm very fortunate for my age to still be in fairly good condition. I am 90 years old. I uh, venture, I don't look 90. I mean, most people tell me I don't. So it's, it's just the good Lord's been taking good care of me. And uh, when I went over there to England, I got in England and in South Wales, by the way, before we got to England, we left New York after leaving Boston, where our training was previous. And uh, on our way overseas, I left on the British liner, the Aquitania. And it took us 11 days to get to Scotland. Why? Because we had to turn about every 10, seven minutes, whatever, to avoid German subs. Otherwise, there would have been 5,000 of us swimming and good bait for the sharks. So, so anyhow, fortunately, we finally got to Scotland. And from Scotland, they put us on a troop train to get into Swansea, England, South Wales, South Wales and England. <clears throat> so for the first nine months, we spent there preparing. Little did we know when the Normandy invasion was to be started. But we were told and to practice our job. Our job was amphibious. I was not infantry. Our job was to uh, go out on these land and sea ships and go out to the boats and get small supplies like medicine, ammunition that was small, and to pick that up, bring them to shore. Of course, we never went out there without being attacked many, many times. Besides, we lived in a foxhole about, oh, I'd say about five, 600 yards back from the beach after we got there. Before we got there on the beach, the hardest part was landing between Utah and Omaha. Yes, I landed with those troops. And when we came in, the water was terrible. If you saw the picture site in Private Ryan, you'll have a good idea what I'm talking about. It was like this coming in. And if you didn't get seasick, you're a liar. <laughs> because it was that bad that bad, we were actually puking on each other. Much less where the movie shows you just two GIs puking. No, they can't show all of you puking on each other. When we finally got to shore, as far as we can pull in, there are a lot of action going on, where these gentlemen talk about shooting up your bombs. There was so much action, so much bombing, so much machine gunning. You couldn't hear anybody yell at you because there was so much action going on. It's a wonder how I can possibly even make that beach. But I tried the best I could because I was so sick and so as many of the other fellows on the boat with me. There were some of the landing crafts that came in, which they didn't tell you on 
on the picture that didn't come in close enough. And before they realized they weren't too close, there was quite a few that jumped off the ramp and they were over their head. And I'm sorry to say with that helmet, your M1, your pack, there's no way to swim to the top. They died without even seeing the beach. When we finally did, most of us dropped down because we were so sick. We came in on the very latter day of the day. The closer we got, the worse it was. I know it's very hard to tell you about Normandy. The best picture was Saving Private Ryan. I've seen them all. I've got plenty of books home. That is the most authentic. And being I was there, ladies and gentlemen, it was very, it was very hard to come on the beach and see all that dead and wounded on the sand. Before the day was over, that, that sand was just red from blood. There were quite a few hundred guys already wounded and dead laying on the beach. And all we did was dug in. I don't know how the good Lord just looked after me and some others. I never got wounded. However, I can't. I can't tell you. There were situations I was in where I said goodbye to my mother and dad. So many times I said goodbye, mama, goodbye, papa. I won't see you no more. Somehow the good laws be good to me. And here I am, 71 years later. I'm in very, very good shape, I should say. I'm married to a Korean lady. She makes a lot of soup, a lot of vegetables. My good man to the right of me has eaten there many times. He knows what kind of Korean food we eat, a lot of Italian food, and so does Sherry Herman sitting back there. <laughs> And uh, her and I do exercise. We do take care of ourselves. We read a lot. As I tell a lot of schools, Ernie and I are very, very into. We speak as many schools as we could possibly speak to. History, history students. History. History students. And history students. And we try, I try to impress upon them that thing about the mentioning. That's all right. Here, right here. Read, read, think about it, do something. Don't just sit there and watch that television. Think, do things. And you could be like me at 90 years old. Take care of yourself, and yourself will take care of you. And there's one thing I do when Ernie and I come, we speak at the Air Force Base, the leadership school. We speak as many schools as we can possibly get. We speak to different groups. I'm happy to say there's a big ceremony coming up next month. I'd love to have you all there. It's on the 19th of November. It's at the UNLV Hams Hall. There's going to be five of us. With, there's just five of us who have received this Legion of Honor from France. I received this two years ago. When I was on my job, a man called up the French consulate and said, Mr. Benza, you are to receive the Legion of Medal from France. And the first thing I told him, I said, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> He says, I know it's been a long time, but he says, you and a few other people in La, Las, Vegas, Las Vegas ought to receive that medal. 
And here I am. I'm proud of that. That's the Legion of Honor. Equals the Medal of Honor in America. Equal to the Medal of Honor in this country. Also, I'm proud to say there's a book coming out on me, which some people got together and they want to write a story because of my life and what happened on Normandy and what happened after I left Normandy, after four months in that foxhole. You don't know what it's like to eat sea ration can day in and day out. When we first got to La Havre after four months, I must tell you that I lived in that same uniform for four months on that beach. Same boots, same socks, same underwear. You don't brush your teeth, you don't wash your face until you got on the ship to unload and you ran into the men's room and you just threw water on yourself. When we got to La Havre, the engineers, we took over a German camp and they set up the shower for us. You don't know what it was like for a bunch of us guys, 10, 15 guys, naked as could be underneath those showers and to see all that dirt come running off your hair and your head and your body and to put on clean clothes again <sighs> and to have real warm food for the first time in four months. I do have a book coming out the end of November. It's called La Havre. If you see it in the bookstore, I'd, I'd be very Pleasure to me if you see me, I'll sign the book for you. I'm so looking for that book to be published. I'm also been honored by two fellows here who have a radio show. It's on every Tuesday night. And they already got together with CBS. And they said, Mr. Benzer, as soon as your book is out, you ought to be on CBS national TV show showing your book and telling your story. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm looking forward to that. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Guy. You're a gentleman and a scholar. <clears throat> One of the things I want to add to him is that uh, you don't probably, I'm sure a lot of you know history, but uh, you know, when they, <clears throat> Germans took over in France a number of months before that, and then, the, the, the beach area, as if I remember correctly, is about six miles long. And uh, there was um, a lot of German revetments up in the mountain that they'd had time to build. And when these poor men come aboard, they got slaughtered. All due respects, and thanks, Jai. I, I know it's tough for you to talk about that once in a while. But, uh, you know, that poor guys got shot. They just, you know, until I could get those pillboxes knocked down. You know, it was pure hell on coming on Omaha Beach. And that, that's not the only beach. I'm only talking about one, I think one of six or one of eight. And uh, anyway, anybody else here that uh, would like to come up and chatter for a few minutes? Well, I, I would also add that in all the bombing that we did by planes and by warships, Last year when I was there, I walked part of that beach. Even though we did go to other areas with the tour I was with, not one, not one bunker was destroyed. That's how well built General Rama built those bunkers to shoot at us. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Just a pleasure to have you talk about it. 